In today's masterclass, we are going to learn about hypothesis testing. Now, hypothesis testing is further divided into these four modules, where the first module will be on steps of hypothesis testing, the second module on will be on the type of the errors which we get while testing hypothesis, third module will be on power of a statistical tests, and finally we will look about some non-parametric tests, especially chi-square test. Let's look at the steps of the hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing starts with stating the null and the alternate hypothesis. The next step is selecting the decision criteria or the level of the significance. The third step is establishing critical t values. Then we move on to actually drawing the random sample and calculating the mean. After that, calculating the standard deviation and standard error of the sample. Finally, calculating the t-value and then comparing the calculated t-value with the critical values and accepting or rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, each of these steps I am going to explain you by an example. Let's move on to move, having a look at that example. Let's start with a hypothetical situation where a researcher claims that the fasting blood sugar of a given population is 135. Now, in such a case, how can this hypothesis be tested? For the hypothesis to be tested, we presume that he is correct and the null hypothesis in that case would be mu, that is the mean of the fasting blood sugar of this population is 135. And the alternate hypothesis is that mu is not equal to 135. Now to this Actually, test this hypothesis, we can either measure fasting blood sugar of each and every person in the population, which is not only expensive but also time consuming, or we can draw a sample from the population and use inferential statistics to draw conclusion from it. So, hypothesis testing is when we actually draw a sample from the population and use inferential statistics. Let's move and move to the next step. Let's say the fasting blood sugar of the sample is 134. Can we reject the null hypothesis? Can we claim that the researcher who said that the population mean of fasting blood sugar is 135 wrong? For that, we have to establish our probability or conventional decision criteria or level of significance, which is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 alpha means in simple words, there is less than 5% probability that the sample mean and the population mean is not the same. Remember, the sample mean is the mean of the sample which you have drawn from the population and the population means is the mean of the entire population. So, when we say in all the hypothesis testing in medical, we use conventional alpha or level of significance as 0 0.05, that is 5% probability. Let's move to the next step that is establishing the critical values. Let's think that okay, to test the hypothesis, we are going to draw out random fasting blood sugar samples of 10 people. So the sample size is 10. Degrees of freedom is 10 minus 1 is 9. This has been explained in earlier lectures. Now, in a table of t scores with degree of freedom 5, the value that divides 95% of the area of acceptance and 2.5 areas of rejection is 2.262. Let me show you the t-table to actually show it. So this is the t-table. Since this is a two-tail test, so we will follow this column and the degrees of freedom is 9. So these two intersect and the value we get is 2.262. Now, why it is a two-tailed test? Because the uh, its a hypothesis will be null hypothesis will be proved wrong, even if the blood sugar level, the mean blood sugar level, is higher than 135 or lower than 135. So, hence it is the two-tailed test which we are using. Suppose the researcher would have claimed that the blood sugar is less than 135, then the null hypothesis would have been rejected only when the mean blood sugar was more than 135 and that would have constituted a single tail test. So you have to understand the difference between a two tail test 
and a one tail test since this is a two tail test with a nine degree of freedom the value we get is 2.262 moving forward so we see that the critical value is plus minus 2.262 why it is plus minus again because it is a two tail test now as told that it is very important at this point to understand why we are using it as a two tail test because the fasting blood sugar is claimed to be 135 if it is for one tail test then the fasting blood sugar would have been claimed either less than 135 or more than 135 so this is exactly how you know it will look like the if we have to uh, you know diagrammatically represent so this is the normal distribution curve the 95 percent this is the mean hypothesis that is 135 now this is the curve 95 percent of the area this is the area of acceptance and these two tails are the area of rejection so 95 percent acceptance 5 percent rejection right and this is the t score on which it is plotted t critical value which we see is minus 2.262 and t critical here in plus side will be plus 2.262 which means any value of t calculated t between 2.262 and plus 2.262 will fall under this and hence our hypothesis will be accepted any value less than this or any value more than this will be rejected so let's move to our case and let's actually draw a random sample and calculate the mean the sample from the population shows the following fasting blood sugar now this is the actual uh, figure which we have which the researcher you know finds it so 115 140 133 125 120 126 136 124 132 and 129 so calculation of mean total is 1280 the mean of the sample is 128 now we move on to test the hypothesis so standard deviation of the sample is 7.54 an estimated standard error that is s by root n is 2.38 now this is standard deviation if you remember we have already taught is by calculating the variance squaring it and di then dividing it by mean and then taking another root so standard deviation can be calculated from this estimated standard error this is the formula where s is the standard deviation n is the sample size so this can be calculated from this now we are not using a standard error of mean because the only one sample we have taken if we would have taken a lot many more samples then we would have went on calculating the standard error of mean so these are the things which we have calculated let's calculate the t value corresponding to the sample mean so t value is observed sample mean minus hypothetical population mean by estimated standard error so in our case observed sample mean is 128 the hypothesis which the researcher gave was 135 divided by the standard estimated standard error which we calculated in the last slide was 2.385 the value comes to be minus 2.93 now let's plot this value in the actual graph and see if the null hypothesis is accepted or rejected so <clears throat> actually let's uh, stop for a while and see what does the value of minus 2.93 means this means that the observed sample mean is 2.9 estimated standard error below the hypothesized mean of 135 so this is the uh, interpretation of minus 2.93 so if we see uh, this was our graph this was the area of acceptance this was the t critical values right we calculated and if we plot this t calculated that is 2.935 this will come in this a range it's less than the t critical value hence null hypothesis is rejected because this falls in area of rejection so with this you hope you understand that how we started with the formulation of a null hypothesis then we established the critic uh, the alpha level or the significance level in in medical mostly the alpha level would be 0 0.05 but yes there can be 0 0.01 alpha level also so for each research you have to specify what is the significance level which you are aiming for then you moved on to move on to establishing the critical t values which starts with defining how big your sample will be 
and once you uh, calculate and see the degree of freedom look up the t ta table to find that t critical value okay you at that state you also have to decide whether your Hucknall hypothesis is two tailed or one tailed test then we move on to actually drawing a random sample we draw the random sample calculate standard deviation calculate a standard error of mean uh, sorry standard error and then we calculate the actual t value and then we plot it and see if our null hypothesis is accepted or rejected so one last thing is what is the t uh, difference between t test and z test you have to understand that when the sample size is greater than 100 so that the standard deviation provides a reliable estimate of standard error z test is used because so t test and z test are based essentially the same test similar formula is used only thing is when the sample size is less then we use t test if the sample size is very very high more than 100 then we we can use z test so t test values at for higher sample uh, for higher sample size will be corresponding to the z test value so with this we end our, this module of hypothesis testing